Hi everyone, my name is Zhao Yue from Houston Methodist. Today I'll be discussing whether resting state can reflect neurodynamic testing in delineating voiding networks using fMRI. I have nothing to declare. First, let's look at our motivations. Why do we want to compare neurodynamic testing and resting state fMRI? It's because UDS procedure is invasive, but during resting states, subjects just need to lie down. So resting states has the potential to be a non-invasive alternative to study brain functions. We are interested in brain activations and the functional connectivity during the entire bladder cycle-related states, such as full urge, initial voiding, and voiding. In this presentation, when I say voiding, it refers to voiding and attempt at voiding. Our goal is to investigate whether resting states can reflect UDS in delineating the bladder-related networks using fMRI. And what is the benefit of using 70 MRI? Compared to the conventional 1.5T and 3T, 70 MRI offers higher signal-to-noise ratio, higher spatial resolution, higher tissue contrast, etc. And therefore, 70 functional MRI can provide more robust brain activation results. For example, the images on the left show both fMRI raw images from a healthy participant. As you can see, the 7T image offers much more details than a 3T because of the high spatial resolution. The images on the right show brain activations when a healthy subject was listening to music. And the 7T analysis presented more robust brain activations following the gray matter gyrus. In our study, so far we have analyzed six female MS patients with voiding dysfunction. After the anatomical MR scan, we performed an eight minute resting state fMRI scan and then a UDS task fMRI scan. During the task scan, subjects press a button to notify us when they feel the full urge, when they start voiding or attempt at voiding, and when they complete voiding. We have analyzed the fMRI time series of 13 bladder-related regions of interest that were reported in literature. These regions include inferior, medial, superior frontal gyrus, M1, SMA, and dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. We computed the functional connectivity maps of all 13 ROIs during full urge, initial voiding, voiding, and resting states. The row and column represent each ROI numbers. When comparing the similarity in functional connectivity between resting states and three UDS states, the highest correlations were found between resting state and the voiding state. The correlation was significantly higher than those during full urge and initiation. This indicates the resting state functional connectivity's potential for assessing the voiding process, but not the full urge or initiation. We also evaluated the consistency between subjects during four states using the intersubject correlation. The high correlations within the 13 ROIs across all subjects during voiding strongly suggest that voiding is consistently achieved through similar network connectivity. The high intersubject correlation in the resting state supports consistency of functional connectivity within the individual bladder-related networks. In conclusion, we found that brain regions within the bladder network are highly correlated only during voiding and not during full urge or initiation. Resting state fMRI can be potentially utilized to reflect the bladder-related networks only during the voiding process. Concurrent urodynamic testing is still necessary for studying the effects of full urge and initiation of voiding. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to this work and the funding sources. Thank you for watching.